Hi, and welcome to this new episode of The Like Leaders. Today, I'm with my friend, Anjuna, with whom we've spent a month together in a beautiful place in uh, Ubud called The Mansion. That's an event for light workers, light leaders. And you've been leading a four-day kind of mini retreat where we connected with angels, archangel, the Galactic Federation. This was quite new to me and it was amazing. So I wanted to have a discussion with you, Anjuna, and present also that work to the listeners. So thank you for being here. If you want to support, you can like, subscribe, and share this video. Today, we'll talk about uh, your work, Anjuna, how you connect to these extra dimensional entities, how it can be useful in, ev in people's lives. And also we'll connect to uh, what we're building together is a new paradigm society that mixes uh, consciousness also and spirituality. That's for today. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for inviting me, good kids. I'm so happy to be here with you. Hello, everyone. I'm Anjuna. My first question to you, Anjuna, is what are you grateful for today? Very grateful to be part of this mission with you. I'm very grateful to be here with you and to share this mind with you and to <clears throat> open another beautiful portal of divine um, expression and divine sharing. And I'm grateful that um, we have this amazing light and that we let mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I'm so grateful for being here in Bali and connecting with so many beautiful people and so many beautiful, amazing souls who are on the same path like me. Um, yeah, thank you, Angina. And I was so grateful during that months-long incubator. So if you go on context, I did a podcast with Will also about it before it happened. And... During that, we had four days where the whole container of people, light leaders co-creating the new paradigm together came to your container, mm -hmm. the Sanctuary of the Light, which is a deeply meditative <clears throat> space. Can you share a little bit about more about um, what your work consists of? So you get, you'll describe it better than I do. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm... The founder of uh, a mystery school called the Sanctuary of the Night, and um, this work I'm offering is basically um, a reconnection to to the divine soul and divine guidance. Um, in this mystery school, you enter different um, state of consciousness and um, different realms and heavenly realms of your soul um, in order to activate, to be initiated, to, um, yeah, to remember, to heal, um, and actually mainly to bring through the new divine consciousness for Gaia and for humanity. Uh, it says that the new Messiah is a collective um, group. It's a collective consciousness. So we, we speak about the new light to come, uh, Christ consciousness, which is source consciousness. And the mystery school I'm having is... Um, providing this um, starlight consciousness of um, source consciousness, just connected to the soul, to the new Christ consciousness. And in this school and in, this, in the trainings and transmissions I'm leading and offering, and well, you were a part of it in the incubator, um, everybody had the um, opportunity to, to step deeper into this um, deep remembrance of the divine soul. And did you feel like um, 
like it being the container and it was a really powerful container. I liked what you said about the collective consciousness. I've heard that a lot and um, that's what we try to create a, a collective also with the DAOs and the incubator, which is like rather than waiting for the new Jesus, Christ con mm -hmm. consciousness is expanding through many of us. Exactly. Which, which is why also that podcast is called The Night Leaders because it's about finding the people who are going to co-create that together. Exactly. Yeah, in this incubator, we had um, a great chance to realign us with our light leader role. And uh, for me, the new light leaders are divinely guided. So it's not uh, only created by the mind or the idea of how things has to be. Um, it's a very powerful process of reconnection and realignment with the, your divine consciousness that you basically channel your own soul in co-creation with the Council of Light, the Fed of um, Galactic Federation, um, your personal guides, spiritual guides, and uh, masters and angels, because they are here for us to help us um, to raise the frequency on planet Earth and uh, the frequency of humanity. So I'm, actually, that's something I'm uh, really curious about is through this work, we connect with energies such as a galactic federation, star seeds, like yes. people ident identifying from different stars, yeah. also angels, archangels. Mm -hmm. And uh, for someone like me, mm -hmm. it, there is still, um, I'm not sure how much I imagine it. And so it actually maybe comes from the mind versus I simply see and receive sometimes mm -hmm. um, because sometimes I use more an intentional imagination of, oh, that Archangel is there to see and feel the energy. Mm -hmm. So where's the, how is it for you? Like, do you, you see them physically? Okay. Do you, what, what's the bridge between, oh, I feel a presence and I put a name on it and a certain form on it? Ooh. So for me, um, I want to go a little bit back, um, back in, in yeah. the days where it's, when it started for me. Yeah. Um, so I was part of a mystery school for 10 years um, mm. in my 20s and 30s. Um, I had a very powerful spiritual healer. She um, worked with these angels. It was an angelic mystery school. Mm -hmm. And um, so she initiated me in that. So she w w was able to invoke these frequencies. At that time, um, many of these divine forces were very new for me. Mm -hmm. So in the moment when she invoked these energies, they were there. I felt them. I felt them physically. Mm -hmm. I felt the energies working with me, and I did. At, and um, I didn't at that time. I I I didn't know them really. You know, it was more like a a deep remembrance from my soul that I know them, but I didn't really from the mind. I didn't really understand them and and knew them at that time. So in this mystery school. I started to study a lot, you know, with them, knowing them better and received a lot of healing. Over the years, these angels and ascendant masters we worked with, they, they initiated me again and again and again. So after a while, I, I felt that I became them. I merged with them or they merged with me and my consciousness started to expand and it became more a universal consciousness and then a galactic consciousness where I experienced that I'm all that. Mm -hmm. um, and during, you know, I had a very strong spiritual practice every day about three hours meditation mm -hmm. with these um, divine forces and um, masters. I learned to navigate with each and every master and each and every angel, and I received specific guidance, medicine, and healing. 
So I studied every angel master, not every, every, I mean, there are thousands. We are, we have so many galaxies, you know, this is just one universe and this experience. Um, but after, after some years, I could really, I knew who is coming, who is entering the field and, um, with who I'm dealing basically. Right. So after maybe five years, six years studying this universal race and masters and uh, star beings um, in such a detail, I they told me that um, they want me to teach this, to invoke them and to initiate others and to transmit these energies. So when you sit in my space, when I'm opening this, they are there. They're working through me and with me for the people. So when you sit in this sanctuary of light with me, it is, it is happening. It's not so much about your imagination. They are truly there. Your imagination can support the intensity of the experience. So. When you practice meditating with these angels um, and you, you know, you visualize them, you might have a stronger and deeper connection with them. But it's actually less with, with the mind. It's more like an, um, a deeper emotional, spiritual experience you're having. Does that make sense? You throw a yeah. gown and you, it's like you were sitting in a vortex of angelic forces and you've been um, mainly taken into this energy. You don't have to project or imagine so much. If, um, but the, in the imagination is a power. So if you are by yourself and you don't have a teacher or someone who is embodying this energy, it's, you can imagine it and through the imagination you are invoking this energy you're calling it in so the imagination can open the portal plus the prayers um it can really you know mm. appear it's it's a tool to basically me is that helpful mm. it is it is okay yeah um and i'm also curious you want to share a bit about maybe Let's just start with one entity you like to work with and how we can work with that entity and how that entity can help us. Okay. It's so interesting. I don't really like so much the word entity. Mm -hmm. Example, for me, there are the divine beings. Mm -hmm. Okay. Entity sometimes also like, yeah, there are, there are so many stories about entities. So for negative, right? yeah, sometimes uh, a negative, some, are, yeah, yeah, that's true. This negative yeah. entity, entity, and I. So for me, there are really super, super beautiful, graceful beings, and they come in with so much compassion and love, and the intention to help humanity to rise and to heal. Um, and it's it is for me not so easy to choose one because I have to. I have such a deep relationship to all of them. So I'm working with, um, ascendant, with ascendant masters like, um, Jesus Sananda and Mary Magdalene, right? So I remember you also feel very connected to them and mother Mary. And, um, then there is lady Sarah, which is, uh, the conscious, the Sarah consciousness, Sarah, it was just coming from the sun, Ra daughter of the sun, um, which has been reincarnated as Sarah Tamar. She was the daughter <clears throat> of uh, Mary Magdalene and Jesus or Yeshua. But she has like a, pre um, a presence in, um, in our universe as Lady Sarah. Yeah. So it's a consciousness, um, which is the consciousness of union. And these days we are working with the union consciousness. It's all about unity. United, divine, feminine, masculine. Um, and then there is Lady Isis, which is uh, one of my uh, main channel 
um, this Egyptian goddess, which is, has her original presence as a galactic goddess. She's coming from another galaxy, but she has been reincarnated in Egypt and in Atlantis. Um, and Ishtar is also an expression of her in um, ancient Sumeria. So um, there are many, many beautiful divine angels and masters um, I, I love to work with. And I also love the star beings, um, the Actulians and Andromedans and uh, um, the people from Lyra and Venus. And these beings are so, so... Um, supportive these days because they bring the new technologies and the the new consciousness going back to uh, Archangel Michael I feel was one yeah I, could, I, mean, I could feel powerful energy of like with the sword right kind of removing yeah. the fear yeah. as a that warrior gentle warriorship not like the Viking or like samurai style so really but, uh, uh, very I, uh, I really like tuning into that energy uh-huh okay so maybe we can quick introduce um, Archangel Michael. So um, he, he loved him so much because he has Archangel Michael in his lineage. And he's like um, a descendant from the Archangel, from the Archangel, Michael Archangel lineage. And so it is part of his, of yours, uh, character, mm. you know, to protect. So Archangel Michael is a very strong force and he is coming in with a group of um, angels there. It's a very masculine energy, uh, divine masculine energy. And he's here to protect, uh, um, I always say he's, prote he's here to protect the grail. Yeah, the grail, the, the Christ consciousness, which is source consciousness in its purest expression and um, you can call in Arch Archangel Michael when you need protection or when you want to clear yourself when you feel like you, you you took something you know you took some energy from someone or um, you you are emotionally attached or um, yes you feel fear in your body so this angel is very powerful to remove fear to detach yourself and to help you to come back into more clarity and he's helping you to stay on your divine path of truth so he's the truth bringer too you want to do you want to tune into this energy do you want to share this uh, frequency with uh, the audience yeah very sure for a moment mm -hmm. yeah i feel a bit shy okay i know <laughs> <laughs> i don't think it, no version yeah <laughs> It's an interesting, um, we can go back to it, but in the meantime, I was also feeling into as like, I love how bold you are. Mm -hmm. And we live in a, like, I, I come from France, you come from mainly from Germany, right? Yeah, it's yeah. Christian Era. countries. Yeah. I'm <laughs> so, not from <laughs> <in love>, German. <laughs> Even worse, <laughs> like in terms of <laughs> religious conditioning. Yeah. And, um, and of course, like talking about, Jesus and Mary Magdalene and their daughter and talking about the Christ within us, I can feel for me there's always there's still that conditioning that um like yeah, that's not within us. Like that's not within me, those energies. I know it is. Yeah. And I feel it sometimes, but especially as we're in front of cameras, there's a part of me that's like, ooh, is it weird to say that? Is it like uh you know, messiah complex that is it yeah. like, like too bold. Yes, I understand. Uh, it's a big topic for, and it's it's still a trigger for people to hear that and to um, allow this energy to come in and to work with, because um, the way people are <clears throat> um, educated and um, and imprinted, I would say, is that um, it's a very, yeah, there's a very religious way to perceive um, Christ consciousness. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it's something what is above us and we, yeah, we are not, um, we, we don't deserve to, to experience it in the right way. So um, 
there's there's actually a lot to heal about it. And for me, one of my very very deep mission is to heal, um, yeah, to heal the Christ lineage and to uh, remember people that Christ is within everyone, and that we are all Messiah, and we are all Christ. Um, in the moment when we accept that we are fully loved and fully healed and um, held by the divine and there is no separation happening. Um, and this is a big journey and it sounds so, yeah, we know this oneness, every, everything is one and, you know, we are, we are loved, but I really mean it, like, like allowing really to step into a vortex of full acceptance and um, a feeling at one with source and feeling the Christ within that uh, is held by um, compassion and unconditional love is, is big. And it's so simple at the same time. And it's for so many people something what they cannot even imagine to live. Or it's like somebody else has that but not me. Or they are afraid to even enter this temple of consciousness. Um, for me, it is something, it's the birthright of every human being, of every soul to um, experience Christ consciousness, which is source. It's God, goddess consciousness. It's free from religion. It's free from any expectations or any projections from the history. For me, it's time to invoke the new Christ consciousness, which is a, a path of unconditional love. It's very, very simple but it seems to be so hard mm. you know it's like okay um this is inside of me all the masters and angels and christ is within me and god is within me and it it makes a difference when you start to experience this within yourself and not longer um, looking for something like that outside and also try to find this in a partner or in in in, in a um, institution you know so mm. it's a, uh, yeah, there's really truly a request from the divine to start to accept and see yourself um, and find divine truth within. I, th I find for me, it's especially with the personification of it. Like, yeah. Um, I, I wouldn't have a problem saying, oh, I am love. Mm. But like, I am Christ consciousness with Philip. Oh, who are you to say that? Yeah. Well, you could say the same typically with I, I, I am lost, but yeah. I, and I think that's more the conditioning. Yeah, it is. Of, of course, it's more like I am love is more general and I am Christ is like the whole story is, is there. <laughs> right? And Especially as I turned 33 yeah. a few days ago. Yeah, <laughs> yeah a few birthdays. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the age of Jesus. Um, you know, I said that Jesus and the age of Jesus on the cross. On the cross, <laughs> yeah. It um, it's not long. Jesus on the cross. Um, the new golden age is Jesus with us. Jesus went down from the cross, and channeling Jesus since many many years. Um, his spirit came to me long time ago, and he. He said, or oh, he's still saying, bring me down from the cross. This is not my place. It was never meant to be like this. So when I'm sitting with this master, it is so beautiful to see um, that uh, all what was taught about him um, is not fully the truth. You know? So this, this master this being um, who reincarnated as Yeshua is a galactic universal star being um, coming from Sirius. And he's a very much related to Archangel Michael. It says they're they are sharing this same consciousness. 
if you learn about that. Have it. It's the same soul. And so it's a very, very complex thing about soul. So we are, as a soul, we are part of a consciousness, of an angelic consciousness. And so it means like you can reincarnate it as here as Alex in this human form, but your higher consciousness is coming from the Christ consciousness and Archangel Michael consciousness, and you are a descendant from this consciousness in this form. And are some human beings not connected to that soul in particular, connected to different? Yeah, there are like beings. different lineages. I'll, I'll, I'll ask you because for yeah. me, for example, yeah, um, I mean, I'm obviously connected to this body mind complex and yeah. vessel. Like I can feel some boundaries, and so always so simple, but I can pretty much feel it, an identity here. Yeah. And then I can yeah, feel very it. real, yeah. I must say, yeah. very in your body. <laughs> and I can also feel myself as part of the oneness. I can I can see uh, that, like all these things, is, is projection of my consciousness. Yeah. But then there's like um, that in between, like people talk about souls, other souls, where, and still to me not so obvious that oh. Um, Jesus is part of, we share the same soul, and that's my lineage, but maybe um, Gautam the Buddha, maybe mm -hmm. I also feel, you know, I also feel I'm connected to him. Yeah. So it's not so clear for me, like, on the soul level. On the soul level, it's all the same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, to me, it's almost like I'm this body-mind complex, or I'm all. But then, uh -huh. then... Like what's exactly my lineage? Like, not so key. Okay. What do you What do you feel is the lineage to? Mm -hmm. So when I ask you, like, when you tune in, yeah, is it like what is coming up? Well, Christ for sure. Yeah. Jesus and yeah, and the Israel. Yeah, it's directly there, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. I found it. Yeah. I mean the Buddha. Mm -hmm. But so often it depends also in my state of consciousness. So. For example, when I meditate, and the Buddha, I feel the Buddha come within me. Exactly. Yeah. Well, um, Jesus to me is more um, like that kind presence, but it's more in action in the world. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then, yeah, for example, I told you Archangel Michael, and like, oh, this kind of samurai gentle warrior energy of, mm -hmm. of that, and I resonate. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So we are all that. Mm -hmm. As uh, I said at the beginning, we these these beings and masters or angels they represent always a part of us. So when you um, when we speak about lineages, of course we are all coming from source. It's one consciousness. Then there was a time where the Elohim angels started to create different um, soul. Um, groups in order to fulfill a certain plan in the universe. And they, they've been taken off from source consciousness and the Elohim angels are the angels of creation. They are, the, they are very close to God, like the seraphim, and, uh, ser uh, seraphim angels and seraphim. So um, in, in this complexity of creation, there, they created different lineages with a, with a, with a, with a certain um, mission. And then they're, yeah, and they're really, this is, this is so complex. You know, I can't tell you all the lineages, but there is for sure one lineage. And the 144,000, they are sharing one oversoul, which is connected to the Christ consciousness. Source itself is Christ consciousness, Christos, yeah, it's Christ Christos mm -hmm. is coming from the, the name, the original name is coming from the Mayans mm -hmm. and Atlanteans, it's, 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 um, means the sun, okay. so Christ is coming from the sun. Sounds like Krishna also. Oh, Krishna. Did you say that? It sounds like yeah. Krishna. Yeah. It's, um, uh, it's all the same, but there's, this, there's a, there's a, um, a lineage, um, who souls who represent a certain uh, frequency and they they bring the Christ codes and the Christ codes 
uh, codes to open the hearts. And Buddha is very close to this, but the Buddha consciousness is more the ascension. You know, it's more like the, the minds. And the Christ consciousness is connected to golden light, and it's more about the hearts. So we are in a time where we have to return back to our mm. hearts. And this is so important that those who are coming from the Sun tribe, and I call this is the Christ lineage, the Sun tribe, that they wake up that they find each other and that they co-create with each other to activate the heart of Gaia. And there are many other lineages. They are also very, very important to come in from different galaxies as long they are representing the lights and supporting rise, to rise the consciousness of, um, on planet Earth. And obviously, like we could go super deep from there. Yeah, and it's many a things. Topic. Even when we did four days, you were like, that's so short. <laughs> and now that we do like a 45 minute podcast, yeah. we see it's not. Um, but it can be to have like a, a bit of an idea that like yeah. super helpful. Yeah. I would love to ask you also, um, like, what I really appreciate about you is on top of your, like, I, I find the purity of your channel and the power and that as a teacher, as a spiritual teacher, we also have a really deep embodiment I found, mm -hmm. which I don't find in every people who channel powerfully, some people they like, some most to the front. Mm -hmm. How do you integrate all that consciousness coming to you into this body-mind complex, mm -hmm. navigating the, the 3D world? <laughs> it was a journey. Because you do that very well also. Thank you. I like like this. Um, <laughs> Managing your time, uh, doing a business. Yeah, it's, it's cool, at least. Yeah, it's, cool. it's a lot of work to bring this all together, to yeah. And how, how are we doing this? Good question. Um, or maybe also, how do how does this work help you in your everyday life? Let's say. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Um. Yeah, true. This this work really helped me actually to arrive on the planet because I felt myself always a bit different and I sense so much since I'm a child and I had some difficulties to um, find my place in the world, right? So... Um, I like that saying, which is, if you don't feel like you fit in this world, it's because you came here to create the new one. Exactly, yeah. And that was the calling and... Um, through finding um, this channel and it's not for me even about it's not about channeling it's about the soul itself like feeling finding um freedom within you know finding um sovereignty that was always my goal and through um yeah doing all this inner work my channel oh my channel opened naturally it's so strong and um Receiving the guidance for my soul and for my guides helped me really to anchor more. It was the other way around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Helped me to anchor my um, higher consciousness on planet Earth and um, helped me to walk on, on this planet Earth uh, with deeper acceptance because I was always different and I didn't know really what to do with all this, mm -hmm. right? So in the moment when I was able to enter this higher consciousness, they showed me this is our nature. Mm -hmm. Everybody's supposed to do that, like having a, a great communication with the stars and with the earth at the same time and embody that. It, for me, it was the other way around. It's like in the moment when the stars opened to me, I, I was able to commit to earth like, wow, okay. Mm -hmm. The, it was the it other way the around. Purpose. It gave me the purpose. I and I started to understand myself better, mm. um, and all the teachings from this um, beings and the and the, the healing light I received from my soul helped mm. me to live a life on planet Earth with more ease and grace and purity. Mm. Yeah. And I was also um, always, a, you know, a body worker and I, I worked as an artist. I was always a freelancer. So I just, you know, took all the tools from that past life, I would say, before I had my awakening 
and translate it into my mystery school. So I had some years to to prepare myself on yeah. Earth before all that opens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was, yeah, it's um working with these energies actually um hel it's helping us to ground more. Yes. To know how to navigate the energy. Yeah. Well, yeah, this is also a thing. <laughs> you yeah, you grow into this, you know, um like we open these channels yeah. and the energies are working with you and then there's always a time of integration mm. and like uh, and you start to acknowledge yeah. Yeah, because powers, right? This power for a lot of people, for example, like we, we talked about comparing with plant medicine, for example, yeah. people feel very ungrounded after plant medicine. Yeah, that's true. Within ayahuasca, we have to do mushrooms. Yeah. Down and, where... and for you, it feels like you ground it well. Yeah. Yeah. It's a con it's like a constant um, work in a way, mm. you know, with joy, of course. Right. Um, wow. You have to take care of yourself afterwards. <laughs> I wanted to ask you also, uh, so you, you're very uh, sensitive to all types of energy. And I know in this podcast, The Liking Does, we've had a long series around uh, raw veganism and fruitianism mm -hmm. and, and the relationship between food, the food we eat and consciousness. I know you're, uh, you're it's actually something in the healing spiritual teacher communities, uh, I find some pretty powerful healers that smoke and don't really uh, do the usual things that we consider healthy. But I know for you, you uh, that's something I think we've, we have in common is that we've very much prioritized the purity of the body vessel and yeah. um, as a support to the purity of the consciousness. And uh, yeah, I'm interested, especially about the story about the fish that you had, because mm -hmm. for me, um, like people who follow my uh, my channel, they know I'm really into like the purity of the food I eat. But it comes more from a health perspective, and and, and a bit more from the mind. But for you, I'd, I'd love for you to share that experience um, with the fish, because yeah, for me, I'm like, oh yeah, it makes sense. I don't want to eat something that was in fear, and I'll take on the energy of that. But it's one thing to know that; it's another thing to actually feel it. Yeah, first of all, everything is energy, right? Uh, everything is energy, and energy is 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 energy can transform but never disappear. So, um, as um, healers or um, um, light workers, we transform energy, right? So, or alchemize energy. Um, if you are if you're unconscious with energy, it can affect you, especially when you are wor working with very high vibration. So um, for me, as a light leader, a light worker and a spiritual healer, um, my, it's, it's not only my channel um, I'm checking, I'm also checking my body. What, what am I putting into this body? Because everything is energy. So I love that you, yeah, you was like my reflection in this inquiry. Like <laughs> eating the whole time fruits and like taking care of that, yeah, about uh, that every everything is clean and pure with the food. And thank you so so much for that. It it oh, it was amazing, uh, very very important for me. I must say. Um, so yeah. Um, coming back to the story. Um, with the fish. Um. I shared once with Alex that uh, my last fish uh, was, I don't know, maybe five years ago or something. Um, I, I ate sometimes a fish, maybe once a year or twice a year. But I um, tried not to eat fish because I don't want to eat animals. I believe that, yeah, every animal has consciousness and I don't, um, yeah, want to, no eat dead things, mm -hmm. I must say. So when I had this fish somehow, and this fish um, teached me in my body um, that it is not on me anymore to eat fish. Mm -hmm. That um, he showed with, uh, he, he shared with me his death process. It was really, really challenging. And um, for two days, I was sitting with his spirit in my body. It's a, 
it was a very interesting experience. Um, I was so high sensitive for any um, information which are not alive. So um, my guides told me, you, you're you working with life force energy. I'm working with um, resurrection energy, mm -hmm. right? Like bringing things back to life also. Um, mm -hmm. And um, you, um, reconnect um, the soul with source uh, energy. And it was said to me that in that state of consciousness and the powers I'm owning and um, being gifted, um, I should not eat um, dead animals, anymore. even if it's a fish. Mm -hmm. And a fish has the same consciousness like, like a cow. And we think it is something different, but it's not. And the fish sh um, shared with me all the, this whole process of death and fear he went through and what happened to all the fishes and the, in the ocean. And he gave me like a, a whole download of two days of suffering. And uh, it, it changed me a lot. This is actually my last fish in my life. Well, yeah. The ocean. Yeah, it's powerful. And um, I had to understand that that energy is like it was a deeper te teaching of consciousness and energy that is related yeah. yeah when we are in a higher vibration and when we want to hold higher frequencies um we should be very aware with who with what we are connected what we take in with what we are sitting and what we are inviting and what we are inhaling and exhaling like um, to hold in in order to hold us in a higher frequency mm. on many many levels um, and to end <laughs> thanks for sharing yeah that was really interesting for me being on that path at that moment i think for a lot of listeners yeah i hope i could uh, explain it in a way that it was clear that it's there's no judgment in it from my side mm. i want to i want to say very clear here everybody is on um, its own journey and it's 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 all about consciousness and frequency so when you when you have been doing the work on yourself for many many years like raising your frequency you cannot connect with cert th certain things anymore which are probably normal for others but it's not working for you anymore and if you're not following this your soul starts to suffer because you already entered higher consciousness and you don't want to go back. You don't want to fall back, right? It's taking yeah, a responsibility for what you so choose and taking care of your body is, is part of it and stay grounded in all that is very, very important. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and, and I love that. And even in that like more Frutanian, Rovigan interviews is like a dad. I encourage people to listen to and even news called Josh X, who's very much on that path, but also in a very non-judgmental way. When sometimes the, the consciousness of certain ways to be uh, to me, it can be yeah. quite judgmental. Yeah, no, I'm I'm for me judgment is um another um another thing of separation. Yeah. You know, I want to keep my consciousness and my my mind clean as I I want to keep my my heart clean, so everybody can choose, right? So um, but I, yeah, but I'm choosing that I want to stay clean, yeah. and I'm choosing to sit in a clean energy, with in in every moment. Clean energy is free energy, and free energy is created through a free spirit and a free mind. Mm -hmm. Um, and from here. I'm creating my new reality and I'm here to create a new ra reality um, of divinity. Yeah, you are. With you yeah. and many <laughs> other resonates. beautiful light leaders and not even light leaders only. It's like sometimes even light leaders has like an, you know, like uh, those who are chosen and those who you know, like sometimes we're not the chosen one; we are the choosing ones. Yeah, that's true. I love that. I love that. Everybody is invited on this path. Everybody. It's very, very important. But the question is, well, who's ready? 
to hold this certain frequency for Gaia, um, where we are attuned with our divine truth, divine love, and divine power, yeah. and not abusing power. We are very conscious how to use power. And this is the main, main thing to look at. How, how do we choose it? How do we enter? Is it coming from a place of div divinity, like really deep connection and um, alignment with my soul? Or am I creating from a place of ego or um, control? And that makes a big, big difference. And so that community, I know you now from that month we spent together in that incubator, you have one of the projects, just um, having a maybe a temple in Bali also. Do you want to share, like, as we touch towards the end of this episode, mm -hmm. uh, what is the, like, what's next for you? Uh, and maybe how people can join what's next for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, um, we are, we, we are in a, in a big birth process. We want to birth, we want to create a divine feminine, um, temple. And, um, yeah, this is actually the, the, the main powerful thing at the moment in my reality, um, bringing the right people together, um, in order to create this temple space to honor the mother. So I have this beautiful sisters, um, um, with me, we, we met, at, in the incubator, also your sisters. So it's like, a a really beautiful big family and uh, we felt like it's time we need to to come together to together and to co-create this temple space um the 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 goddess temple we call it um a feminine essence temple where everyone can remember their divine feminine essence women and men all beings because we feel that this is the key to unite um, with each other and where this where harmony, balance and healing can happen when the feminine is returning, when the goddess is returning. Which is interesting because my next guest the CPI and the you know, prophecy of that thing is the the condero um flying with only one wing, right? And missing the feminine yep. wing. Ah yes. So it's, it's so it's going in circles and waiting for the feminine wing to mm. come alive again. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, it's so interesting because we, in this um, co-creation with my sisters, um, we are working with the medicine of the lotus. So um, this priestesshood or sistershood we are in, um, which has been, you know, created in this incubator, uh, calls sesen. And sesen means in ancient Egyptian language, means the lotus flower, which is also very present here in Bali. And um, there is a prophecy in Egypt. It says when the, the lotus returns to Egypt, the divine mother is back on planet Earth. So see, the, the golden civilization or the civilization of uh, the golden uh, light or the, 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 the new human being can, can be born. And it can only happen when the divine feminine essence returns and has been acknowledged and awakened within every um, human being. And um, so everyone's waiting for the divine feminine essence to return. And being here in Bali, I'm say it's 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 so present here, right? It's like it's like in every moment you are so connected with the divine essence of the of the goddess of the mother so for us we feel bali could be the perfect place to build this temple and from there we want to build more temples so if there is anyone out there who will love to support us we're looking for land and for funds and um, other beautiful brothers and sisters who want to support us um, it is a temple of union but held by the divine feminine. This is beautiful. I look forward to mm -hmm. the manifestation of that and for helping in your way, Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. And thank you for joining us today. I'm pretty sure we'll, we'll have a little follow-up. 
Yeah. Well, this episode was so nice. Every time I see you, it's like there's a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of things to talk about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there are, um, yeah, it has a lot of depth, this work, the, the awakening of the divine soul is, um, it's, it's such a deep, deep work was so beautiful, so divine and, um, and so healing partly one, you know, so I'm happy to continue with you, um, whenever and it's yeah, time. Maybe. Thank you so much. And you know, thank you to everyone trying to discover uh, what we've been up to for some of the incubator and for yeah. the open new possibilities. Um, if you want to support the channel, if you love that episode, make sure to share, to like, subscribe, and I will leave you the, the last word for the closing of this. Thank episode. you. I feel like to invite those who feel a calling to connect deeper with the divine feminine um, essence to you um, come to south of France and it's so beautiful that you are coming from France mm -hmm. right I'm, I'm holding a beautiful um, Mary Magdalene Isis um, priestess training in July 21st of July in Rennes Chateau in Rennes -le Chateau <laughs> yes for nine days um, and we have some places um, left and if you feel like to join us or um, once a year, I'm offering priestess trainings in um, Egypt. Yeah. Um, so the next one will be in November, and it's for women and for men. So maybe you want to come with your beloved. Yeah. Uh, maybe you want to come. And there will be also several beautiful online programs where you can learn to connect um, deeper with ascendant masters and star beings. But I want to say here, something very important for me, first of all, it is important that the human soul remembers its light, and there are different ways to remember its light, to remember and to invoke the light within. So there are ways to connect with star beings and masters, but first of all, in my teachings and in, in my work, I like to remember the connection and strengthen the connection to the own soul. And um, from here, we can invoke more of these beautiful beings if there is a desire to invoke them. Uh, but first of all, it's all about the soul and the heart and the deep healing and um, the deep remembrance of who we are and always have been and always will be. Oh, no, 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 no. So you deserve it. Yeah. Thank you, and Jenna, and of course, I'll put your, your links all on the videos. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. And if you guys want to have some personal support, um, I'm also offering one by one sessions and coachings. So this is all possible too. Mm -hmm. Thank you, dear. Thank you for inviting me. And um, hit. Namaste. Thank you. When my... <laughs> my Egyptian foot drum. Sweet wedding. For the closing. Good fears. Bull, honey. Okay.